Hi guys and welcome back to another video now today what I'm going to be bringing you is season 5 episode 11 of City Signings now just before we get into today's video if you could drop a like on it can we try and hit 80 likes on today's video it's a big ask but I know that you guys can do it subscribe if you are new as well we are now on the road to 6,000 subscribers trying to hit 6k by me so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already get your post notification bell on as well so you never miss a video of when I upload drop a comment in as well down in the comment section down below Bradford fans Luton fans what are your thoughts on this signing make sure as well to share the video around with your family and friends but today at eight o'clock this morning it was officially confirmed that Dion Pereira I believe I'm saying that right has joined on a loan deal until the end of the season from Luton Town I've got a bit to talk about in today's episode obviously with the January transfer window opening on Saturday we have completed our first bit of business I expect a little bit of business to be done in this window a few players coming in I do also expect a few players to leave the club so make sure you drop a like and subscribe and let's get into technically the first episode of the January window but the 11th one of this season Let's get into it. So at 7.45 this morning, Bradford City tweeted saying it's January and we all know what that means with a picture of Derek Adams smiling. Then they released a little trailer video at two minutes to wait about our new signing. And then it was officially confirmed by Bradford City at eight o'clock saying breaking news. We are delighted to announce the signing of exciting forward at Dion Pereira who becomes our first January recruit on loan from championship side Luton Town. The article does then read the highly rated 22 year old can be deployed as a winger or attacking midfielder and arrives on a deal until the end of the 2021-22 season. Having graduated from the Watford Academy, Pereira then gained experience in the MLS with Atlanta United before signing for the Hatters in 2020. He made his Premier League debut for the Hornets against Leicester City in 2017 and was awarded the 16-17 Young Player of the Season award at Vicarage Road. Pereira said, It's an amazing feeling to be here and I just want to get the ball rolling and start playing. The gaffer has told me everything he wants from me and now I fit into the team. I like to bring creativity uh, to games with assists, putting balls into the box and driving at defenders. As soon as I touch the pitch, it's my opportunity to show the supporters what I can do and give everything for this club. I like pressure and I'm looking forward to getting going. City manager Derek Adams said we are delighted to be welcoming Dion to our squad and are looking, to fo looking forward to seeing him in action. He can play in a range of attacking positions including out wide or as a number 10 and has a lot of experience uh, at such a young age with Watford, Atlanta United and Luton. He likes to create opportunities for other players so he's up to us to get the ball to him and hope he can excite our supporters. Pereira will wear the number 28 so not the number 10 shirt so that is still available uh, so fingers crossed that will be getting fulfilled later on in the window but yeah he will wear the number 28 for the Bantams and be sponsored by Ellen jewellery with his signing subject to the relevant EFL and FA clearances. Now obviously Lewin have done their article as well they tweeted at, all, at the same time 8 o'clock this morning saying Dion Pereira has joined Bradford City on loan until the end of the season. Go and smash it Dion. Dion Pereira joins Bradford City on loan is how the article begins. Pereira 22 signed a contract extension with the Hatters in August 2021 before heading to Yeovil on a one month loan in October where he made one appearance before his time at Hewish Park was ended early due to injury. The Forward now, well now, it's meant to say play, but they've put ply. He's trading League 2 for a Bradford City side that couldn't sit 12th in the table in order to get regular game time under his belt after impressing during cameo appearances for the Hatters. Best of luck with the Bantams, Dion. Now, apologies for uploading this quite late, obviously. This is the only day of the week that I had college this week, and of course he had to announce the signing at 8 o'clock this morning. So I saw it just as I was on the bus to college. I was like, oh, brilliant. Of course this was going to happen. So I've uh, rushed home, rushed the video. So fingers crossed, you guys. Uh, appreciate the effort that I've gone through to get it out for you tonight. Obviously, it's uploaded a little bit later than usual, but... If we go through some of his career stats, in 2015-17 to 17, he was with Watford in his youth career. Then 2017-2019 to 2019, he was with Watford's first team. Uh, he made two appearances for Watford. In 2019 he made eight, 18 appearances for Atlanta United. And also in 2019 he made five appearances for for Atlanta United's second team. Then in 2020, he joined Yeovil, uh, sorry, he joined Luton, where he's made one appearance so far, and he also uh, joined, uh, as we just mentioned there, Yeovil on a one-month loan, where he's made one appearance there. Now, he's yet to score a goal here, according to these statistics, going off of Wikipedia, which is not really ideal, but according to Luton fans, they seem to rate him highly, they seem to think he's an absolute worldie of a player, so fingers crossed he can do the business for us. If we have a look at some of the replies that Luton fans have been saying, someone here says he's the best player 
player to ever grace your football club. He's decent, just doesn't get enough game time, should be decent for League 2. Barely played for us, so I have no idea. Yeah, he's decent. Needs time desperately, he's good. If you have a look at some more of the other replies, excellent player in my eyes, just not getting game time at Luton. So, if this is Championship uh, fans, well, who are... These are fans of a club who are watching Championship football and saying he's decent. He can only do well at League 2. Now, usually with loans, they either go one of two ways. They either go absolutely superbly and you never want them to leave and you hope you can sign them on a permanent basis in the summer, like an Andy Cook. Or it's an absolute shambles and they play one game for your club and never play again, like a Roman Burrell, a Glenn Middleton. So, fingers crossed for our sake and for Dion's development's sake that he does well for us. Because he's 22 now, he's not exactly a teenager. He does need to start developing, you know. He's not really had all too much regular first-team football with him being able to play in a number of positions, though. That is decent. I think he probably will be operated more as a right-winger. If I think about it, I mean, I know Gilead got two assists at the weekend, but he's not put up amazing numbers so far this season as uh, has Alex Gilead. He's not really had the Competition since we sold Oli Crankshaw to Stockport. Obviously, on the left hand side as well, we've got Vernon when he is fit, probably the best winger in this league, so I can't really see him replacing him. Obviously, we have Issa as well, but I mean, He's played about three minutes for us and he's injured again, so who knows what's going on with Abelisa. And in that number 10 position, if he does want to play there, Callum Cook, I think he's pretty much undroppable, to be honest. Obviously, there's a lot of rumours linking him to Bolton. There's a lot of rumours linking Elliot Watt to Blackpool and Norwich. I mean, let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section down below. But back on it to Dion Pereira. I'm happy that we're able to add another addition into that forward line. I think we have been a little bit... Not weak, but a lack of numbers in that sort of position over the last uh, couple of weeks and so, sort of stuff. So it's nice that we've got another player in there because Gilead was our only real fully fit winger. Obviously, Angle can also play on that left-hand side when we do play that 4-2-3-1. So we've got a lot of attacking options now. You know, does this maybe mean we've, we've brought him in to free up some room for another player to go out? Maybe this is the Ollie Crankshaw replacement in the short term. I'm not really too short, so I'd be massively interested to hear all your thoughts down in the comment section down below. Now, I've seen on Twitter and Facebook and all that sort of stuff, people saying that because he's not scored 30 goals in his last three matches is an absolutely woeful signing again we've not even seen the man play football give him an opportunity let him have an opportunity to express himself this is the first signing under Derek Adams' scout uh, scouting team as well so we'll be we'll be able to see pretty quickly if you know the scouting team that Derek's got is any decent or not because a lot of the signings we made in the summer were under Lee Turnbull and all that sort of stuff and the majority of them haven't really cut the mustard so far obviously some of them have done pretty decent like Angle like Songo probably missing a few of us as well obviously Andy Cook was pretty much a given so I don't really think you can give too much credit to Lee Turnbull for that one but first signing under Derek Adams new scouting team it'll be interesting to see how he does get on fingers crossed he will as well be involved for Saturday obviously we take the trip to Carlisle so it'd be nice to see him uh, available and hopefully selected in the squad. I don't think he'll probably start. We've been not playing all too much football recently. I don't think he'll be match fit to be able to start the match. But fingers crossed, if he's on the bench, he comes on for 20, 15 minutes, something like that. It would be great to see all that sort of stuff. But that is where I am going to leave it for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure you drop a like on it. If you could try and hit 80 likes, as I said at the start of today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 6,000 subscribers. Trying to hit 6k by me, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Get your post notification bell on as well so you never miss a video of when I upload. Drop a comment in down in the comment section down below. What are your thoughts on this signing? Personally, I think he looks like a baller from what I've seen uh, in the video. You know, he seems like a little bit of a shit house. He likes to, you know, he's been doing the shush and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, may, he might wind up a few opposition fans every now and again if he is scoring the goals. But yeah, let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section down below. Personally, I think it, it you know, it's, it seems pretty much a no-brainer. Obviously, it depends how much we're paying in terms of wages and all that sort of stuff. Usually, you don't really pay wages when it's a championship player coming to a League 2 club. But if we're not paying anything, then it just it does seem like a no-brainer. Brainer. He's getting development. We're getting a decent player by the looks of things. So I'd be interested to hear all your thoughts down in the comments below. Luton fans, let me know what his best and worst attributes are as well in the comments section down below. Share the video around with your family and friends. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching and I shall see you all in the next video very soon. Fingers crossed another signing as well. I'll see you all later. Peace.